Hello guys and welcome to Air Tycoon Online episode 20. Um, this is a pretty cool episode because look at this profit. 264,000 and what is almost 1970 now, but uh, that's pretty good. Now, it has been going down ever since then and that is due to, I think we are in a fuel spike situation. Um, so the fuel prices have been shooting up basically. Uh, but besides the fuel, oops, oops, click that again. But besides the fuel spiking situation, it has like, you know, my profit's been going up at a very considerable rate. Like as you can see, to fill my fuel tank costs literally fifty percent more than it did before. And with the pretty slim profit margins in Air Tycoon Online Three, in general, we we actually really significantly do feel um, the effects of having to you know, pay just a little bit more for fuel, like, we, we notice, um, unlike in sometimes Air Tech in Online 2, I wouldn't even notice if there was a fuel spike, I was like, eh, that's a little bit odd, my profit isn't quite as high as I thought it would be, and that's, you know, about all you feel, but in Air Tycoon Online 2, that's really, or 3, that's really not the case, even if the price goes up just a little bit, you really do notice quite quickly, now, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure uh, have a lounge if the lounge is still one credit um i have to wait for the slot request to finish i guess but lounges were only one credit for a time and so i'm still trying to make sure a lot of my major airports will have a lounge because you know what like paying one credit for a free passenger boost sounds like a great deal to me um so there's no way i would be turning that down now one thing as you guys might have noticed is I am running out of routes. It is a dire situation now. Um, like, while there are still some routes to Los Angeles, um, there's truly not many left. Like, look at the state of this. I have used almost every route in range of uh, my 7, 6... Ooh, I can't... Yeah, it's not a proper stopover. I thought that was. I didn't see that warning message for a bit. But, like, it seems like this is the only city left which I can make stopovers to Europe with before going on to the Pacific Ocean side of things. So, I'm even going to eventually have to start doing that if I want to keep using Los Angeles as a hub um, before we, you know, move on to longer range aircraft which can more comfortably reach Asia with Los Angeles. So, like, there's a lot of potential in LA, but most of it has to remain untapped for now while we have uh the quite limited range of uh the dc8 now as you can see though we can still reach uh most of europe or not most of europe but enough of europe to make it you know pretty good no i don't have any slots in einhofen yet so i'm gonna be doing that but another thing you guys might have noticed is chicago ran out of slots so I have to wait for that basically but let me just keep trying to find more routes for los angeles until um that's done because if we look at chicago like i have literally used every city in south america possible i think brasilia too uh yes brasilia too um in order to make routes uh stop or routes to europe and there's only so many cities left like for example i'm starting to order slots in cities like this just to serve as um one half of a stopover route for example i might want to make kenwick to chicago and then a stopover to something like this um obviously that particular route is uh not valid but something like that these are options for routes i'm considering for example uh which is kind of insane no a lot of other routes like this should be possible so um, I need to, you know, get my slots ready uh, in some of those cities. But basically what I've noticed is even routes which you wouldn't expect to make profit just because they're really bad do make a profit. Like in prime example to Santo Domenico, Santo Domenico is terrible, yet the route is still profitable. Um, not very much. But then another route which you'd think is terrible, like this is actually quite decently profitable. And then a route which you still wouldn't think is good is also once again quite decently profitable now these numbers don't look high but you guys have to keep in mind that um, those numbers are artificially lower basically and what I mean by that is those numbers could be a lot higher 
but they're simply not due to um, uh, the fact they're only one half of a stopover route. Um, but anyways, on the other hand, um, there's a lot of routes available like um, London or what is this? Um, some place in Europe to Los Angeles to you know some random islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I know Nadi is in range. Uh, Kona and Honolulu are in range. Uh, I think Saipan is in range. Um, where is it? Over here. Yep. And I even have slots. That's great. Um, so I only have a few more routes available to Los Angeles, but I think they're all gonna be decent. So uh, I can choose between Bilbao and Porto. So let's definitely use Porto. Um. Is something like this possible? No. It's just too sharp of an angle, not a proper stopover route. Neither is Sacramento. So unfortunately, we are unable to tap into that. But, I mean, later on, we can try all of these cities. Um, Auckland is a bit too far still. Port Villa is probably a bit too small. But, you know, these are all options. Uh, so, yeah, what was I doing to Porto? Yep. Yeah. So... That's yet another decent small route done. But yeah, I'm really wondering what I'm going to do in the later on stages of this game. Because, like, it's 1970, I have three hubs, and I'm already, you know, so strained on being able to find new routes. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, one of the interesting things I noticed is that if I look at my previous, like... Air Tycoon Online 3 videos, I realized I was able to, I was allowed to make a stopover using any city, but now I have this stupid message, um, so I can't do that, and believe it or not, I feel like that's actually a really strict restriction, and I think that because previously, almost every city was usable, um, due to the fact you could use a small city as the center of your stopover instead of a large so-called stopover enabled city um basically you were able to make use almost every city you found if the city existed there was a way to include those cities in a stopover route and if i were to ever go back to air tycoon online 2 like there would literally be an amount of routes that i would want to take that is impossible to do because there's just not enough time basically i'm saying There'd be an infinite amount of routes in the old Air Tycoon Online 2 stopover system if I were to switch back to it now knowing what I know about making stopovers in Air Tycoon Online 3. On the other hand, um, maybe I can find a way to eventually use every city. For example, I want to make Chicago um, to all these cities because I know they're profitable. Um, basically, every city with an airport in Europe is profitable but there's just doesn't feel like there's just not enough corresponding cities in North America. Like, look at this. I'm already starting to resort to really strange routes, which I would, you know, normally never consider. But they are now in the forefront of my considerations, thanks to um, the extreme lack of routes. Now, there's also an extreme lack of slots in Chicago, so I'm going to have to wait for that to finish before I can do anything. But in the meantime, I can even focus a little bit on London. London's second airport is almost full, which is insane. But I remember, let me, like, I have a route here. So let's see if I can find a landing city. Um, basically, any city in the world I choose will be profitable, actually. But, you know, just choosing a slightly decent, better city doesn't hurt. Um, a route like London to the Midlands apparently is completely profitable and I have to thank a commenter. I want to give you a shout out, but I forgot your name because I'm dumb. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll give you a shout out next episode. But basically, he pointed out that London to a city with a hundred uh, tour would fill up any aircraft. And I was skeptical at first. I was like, eh, doesn't sound right. And it he's completely right. It literally a route like like maybe it's that this game is different from previous air tycoons. So. I didn't notice, but yeah, like literally every single route, like no matter what fills to Lo to a city like London, LA or Sh Chicago, there's, as long as you make it a stopover, it's full. 
So like, it's basically just a matter of finding out how to incorporate certain cities into stopovers. Um, the main issue for me is that when you're trying to use the large North American cities, Chicago, uh, New York, and Los Angeles, you just run into the problem where there's way more cities to the to the east than there are to the west. So you have to use like strange directions like north and south to try and make stopovers, but it's you know simply not ideal. Like once the seven six seven comes out and like my um, you can reach cities like these with uh, like all all these like cities with um with aircraft basically. Where am I gonna make the other side of the stopover? I have no idea. Like. I've used every city in here except for these, like, four. So, I mean, like, that's four more routes than I had. I can use, like, the north coast here. I can use Port Moresby. I can probably, uh, I think, you know, kind of that's kind of things in range. But then this angle gets really small, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, there's all sorts of really, really interesting things to consider that i don't know how i'm gonna do in the future but eh, i'll be interested to find out now is there any more routes i can make to london i'm gonna run out of slots in london soon too but pyongyang i can use pyongyang um pyongyang once again is not a great city but i've discovered that even cities which are considered not even great are more than enough um, that is not a proper stopover. As you can see, that's what I mean. That's what's going to happen in LA. The angle will get too thin and it won't let me make the route anymore. So maybe I'll use something like this uh, with a DC-862. Now, if you are really skeptical of what I'm doing, like I'm just making, you know, large routes like, or large taking large cities to tiny cities like, um, London to these really really small cities and you're really skeptical you're just thinking there's no way that's gonna work that doesn't make sense um let me just look in my routes tab for a second let me show you guys so if I sort by profitability a lot of these routes will be very surprising Chicago to Novosibirsk that's one of my most profitable routes um Abidjan to Chicago Abidjan is a pretty small city 120 like business and 120 tour um if we keep going down we'll start to see uh, a lot of really really small cities making a lot los angeles to puerto mont puerto mont is a city which is very very small and this is just how my company is set up it just they're all stopovers and they all make decent money now once we get into the dca 11s this is a slightly different thing because they're leased um we're cutting, you know, a significant chunk of profit off of them. Basically, they'd be making more if they weren't leased. But the net profit considers that the plane is leased, so there's a lease expense. Um, so it's not quite as profitable. Um, another thing which is pretty interesting about profit, actually, on that note, is here's my net profit, but this is not my net profit. This is mislabeled. This should be labeled net value gain. And the reason for that is... Aircraft depreciation is listed as one of the expenses, but aircraft depreciation does not cause you an immediate loss in cash. Aircraft depreciation is your value depreciating, not your cash depreciating. So I'm actually going to gain my net profit plus um, my net depreciation plus the cost of fuel I saved because, for example, fuel is 194k right now. But I'm, my fuel tank holds 30,000 K versus, worth of fuel. Um, and a lot of that is being calculated into the fuel expense. So I'm actually going to be sit, making, you know, another about 20, 30 K um, for fuel uh, in my fuel tank, which is, um, if we take a look, uh, I only have one, but uh, yep, here it is, my fuel tank. So like... The fuel tank costs, I don't know, around 30,000 K, so 30 million to fill. So when you add up all those little factors together, basically I end up making almost 300,000 in cash a turn. And I was making close to 350,000 cash per turn before the fuel price uh, went through the roof, basically. 
So that's just a pretty interesting thing I noticed about this game. Another thing is, as you can see, I'm my I've climbed back into second place, and my lead over second place has now become quite substantial. Especially now that I'm going to stop leasing until for a while, my value is going to start shooting up faster than it was before. Um, if we take a look at my value graph, wherever that is, I'm going to have to take a while to find this, my bad, here it is. Um, we can see a lot of little strange dips. Now, it just zoomed out, but as you can see, there's a little dip there, there's a little dip there, and... There's a few places, for example, here where the graph isn't as steep as you might expect it, um, where if you like take a very careful look at this curve, it's slightly exponential, meaning it's increasing faster as we get higher on the graph. But there's a few wiggles and niggles and a few flattened areas which are a little bit flatter than you would expect. And most of the reason for that is because of leases. Now, to explain why leases cause your value to decrease, it's simply because when you pay the down payment for the lease, like for example, if I go to buy an aircraft now, and I go to DC-811, my favorite one, for example, if I go to lease this plane, um, the down payment uh, here, like 13k, um, this doesn't add to your value in any way. So basically spend 13 million and gain no immediate value. So that make you question why would you ever lease if you don't gain value from leases and the answer is a lease pays itself back very quickly if my leased aircraft net profits 2k 2k a turn it'll pay itself back in six turns that is the fastest roi time in the entire game and what i mean by roi time is like how many turns it takes for your pain to plane to pay for itself so for example if my plane had an ROI time of 12 turns, it pays for itself after 12 turns. Therefore, in 12 turns, I could buy another one of those aircraft using the money that um, that single plane made, which is insane. Because imagine if I had 200 planes with a 12 turn ROI time, that means I would be able, I could be able to buy. 200 new aircraft every 12 turns now most aircraft do not have that fast of an roi time and planes which do have that fast of an ROI time leases have a hard limit uh, imposed by the game on how many you can use um if i could lease aircraft infinitely in this game i would um but that's simply not allowed due to balancing issues um wait did i already, do I already have that route looks like i do hmm. um See if there's anything in the right range to not waste a too long range route on this. Um, Great Falls. Let's order slots in Great Falls. Yep, that is the extent of my desperation for routes. So we are literally going to use every city with an airport. Um, I'm wondering how many of these um, cities later on in the game uh, have and don't have airports. Because I don't know. Uh, but like... I'm basically just going to eventually use literally every single available city which has an airport, period. Uh, not sure if that's a great idea or not, but we'll see. Uh, let me just get some slot requests ticking in London, too. I want to grab some of those last few slots in London because I do have a maintenance depot in London. Uh, so the more slots I can get in London, too, before having to move on to London 3 is a good thing for me. So... Yeah, let's get making on our route. So Chicago, uh, stop over. Where do we want to land? Probably just here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna literally use every city in North America. As you guys know or may not know, I have a lot of Tupelo 124 routes. Now Tupelo 124 has a 2,000 range, so most of those routes will be below 2,000 range. But eventually, when I have 767s, the 767 itself has a range greater than 10,000. And what that means is, usually, right, I need to find a round, route really close to the maximum range of the DC-8 or whatever. And then have a decently long second leg of the route. Like, the routes are forced to be, you know, about 1,000, 2,000 K in length. But um, once I'm using the uh, planes like the... I'm losing my train of thought. Hold up. Planes like the uh, 
uh, Boeing 767, I can make the second leg of the route very short. Now, as you guys know, then the second leg of the route will carry very little weight, meaning, um, for example, this route might decrease from six schedules a week to five schedules a week. So basically, the long haul route is still, you know, can't be too bad without losing a lot of occupancy. But it's still a lot better, in my opinion, than trying to fly direct, um, which just most of the time is not profitable, in my experience, um, or less profitable. And I'll give you a good example of this. Um, I have a few DC 811s flying direct, um, just because I could not for the life of me, find another stopover destination. I thought, hey, let's see what happens if I fly direct, um, if I can make, you know, a good amount of money. For example, um, let's see if I can find one. Chicago to Brussels. This is direct. It's making $1.6 million. Now, that's not a lot. I had to lower the price a lot to get it to 100% occupancy. The very next DCA is on a stopover, um, a pretty bad stopover. So, for example... Uh, London to Yerevan and then London to Omaha. This this DCA is making well over one two point two k. That's more than direct route. Um, even though Brussels is better than either one of those other cities, so I still feel like even if you make a bad stopover route, the bad stopover route is still better than the good direct route. The only point for direct routes is for bragging rights. Basically, um, you can show off, hey, I'm making. Um, this high amount with one aircraft and it looks cool but other than that i honestly don't see the purpose uh to direct flights in this game anymore um now as you can see i cannot find a single city which gives me a valid stopover oh that that works oh no it's not oh that's frustrating see there's simply not a singular city, not one, which will make this route valid. Um, maybe this? Nope. Uh -huh. And that is where stopovers become frustrating. Um, yeah, because these routes aren't worth making direct. Los Angeles is such a great city, but there's nowhere to end the stopover in, which is really frustrating, like that's left that has no airport but i can use that once it does and that's literally it there's just no more cities in the right position on freaking planet earth to make these routes possible hmm i can't think of another way to do it i really can't like there's just literally la is on a place where with the flights coming in the angle is just wrong unfortunately um <clears throat> so yeah I guess I'm just going to keep doing Chicago for now. But, uh, yeah, going to have to wait for longer range aircraft to take more advantage of Los Angeles, it looks like. Um, maybe for now I can get some of the stopover capable cities in. But as it appears to me, most people have already done those. And luckily I'm not missing off on too much because there's not that many cities still in range. But, I don't know, maybe later on. So maybe I can do London routes, but I don't think there's any left. Um, they're, I'm running out of cities in Asia. Like, there's just, you know, no cities with airports. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's Nanjing. I don't get Nanjing. I don't see why not. Um, Napida. Oh, I could get Napida, and I could get Chittagong. So yeah, there are cities left, so I'm going to work on slot requesting those and getting those but anyways i hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode i certainly did i'm sad la has run out of routes but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys next time